For granted, more than a billion people lack access to safe and clean drinking water, nearly half of which are children that are affected by diarrhea caused by unsafe drinking water. Diarrhea is now the second cause of child mortality. Sarawak is no stranger to this problem. Meet Shafiq, a cheerful, energetic and curious boy. His parents work hard every day only to barely be able to put food on the table. sebagai seorang nelayan lah masa untuk kerja tu memang tak tentu ada kala balik petang ada kala bermalam di laut lah saya susah nak tengok anak-anak saya pergi ambil air dekat belakang jadi jarak dari rumah di nak ambil air tu memang dia tak jauh tapi kadang-kadang uh, kita takutlah keselamatan anak kat luar uh, jadi saya pun jarang ada kat rumah Sebenarnya uh, memang ada mahal sikit lah Jadi untuk uh, sendiri dengan anak-anak uh, Anak-anak saya suka dengan air ni Jadi masalahnya uh, ada mahal sikit lah uh, Air yang sikit ada sekarang ni bukan dia tak boleh uh, Kena tapis lagi, kena masak lagi apa semua Jadi ada lama sikit lah Dalam masak air, kena guna air kotor Lepas tu Tengok-tengok anak-anak pun uh, macam dah Tak uh, sanggup lah tengok Anak dia Minum air macam ni Keadaan malam uh, memang tak selamat sangat lah Jadi Untuk anak-anak saya, saya cuma risaukan Takut-takut uh, orang-orang luar Takut-takut haiwan ke Apa yang masuk lah Kadang kena guna jugalah uh, Lampu Lampu di tanah eh Nanotechnology Saura Industries has developed a water purification solution that is safe, affordable, and effective. The vision of Saura is to uplift lives through technology that provides safe and clean drinking water to rural and marginalized communities that is economically and environmentally sustainable. Safe, affordable drinking water is now within reach. Yayasan Siti Sapura Husin has taken a huge leap to bring safe and clean drinking water to not only Shafiq and his family, but also 84 other families in three villages totaling nearly 425 people. Cerita-cerita kami tak sebenarnya tinggi nak jadi seorang untuk beli sepik lah. Tapi ada keadaan-keadaan yang mengizinkan. Jadi kami ngajak lah. Untuk ajak yang kami dapat pula jadi seorang nelayan itu dah kira Alhamdulillah lah. Kami, yang penting anak-anak kami dapat sekolah yang bagus, dapat kita orang sampai ke kita orang nak gading lah apa yang dia bawa sedapnya. Ini ada harapan kami lah. Special thanks to Yayasan Siti Sabura Husin.
Yeah, so uh, we we are to, we are trying to push the product across uh, the region now, and uh, I think like what I think it was my a very informational <laughs> Monday for me. I've never had this much of information uh, since professor. I think it's quite some time since I saw a professor talk as well uh, since the days of the university. But uh, I thank everyone for listening, and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ganesh. So, you know, the, the reason why I thought it would be really good to hear from someone like Ganesh is here we have a, an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur, really ambitious to bring a new product to market. But as you can see, uh, you know, he developed a new technology. And uh, this, is the, this is the core of the business. If somebody else copies that, that's it. There is no more business. So immediately there's an issue of patent that as an intellectual uh, property rights. Then, uh, you know, so, so, so that is the technology itself. Then there's also the issue of uh, the brand. So he developed his company and his brand name is Saura Industries. He clearly has big ambition with the company because he called it Industries. Uh, but, you know, somebody else can easily produce something if somebody else can produce something and label it as Saura Industry product, then that means that that's another issue of copyright of trademark infringement. Um, you know, there is also you know other sim more simple thing like you produce a video. If if someone takes a video and then put another company name at the end, that's a copyright issue, right? So uh, immediately all these issues from the inter uh, intellectual property comes into play and shows how important it is for us if we really want to to build an entrepreneurial society. We need to think about all these issues. We cannot ignore them. And uh, that brings us nicely to a more controversial topic. Uh, which is the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which has an IP chapter. Uh, uh, it's a, a quite, quite a contentious chapter that everybody talks about. So we have with us uh, Burhan, who will explain the IP chapter and try to answer uh, some of the contentious issues. Well, Jay Burhan is a lead negotiator for the IP uh, chapter in the TPP for Malaysia. He's from the Ministry uh, of uh, Domestic Trade. So, Jay Burhan. Thanks to Saifu uh, for the opening remark, uh, which I think uh, will be useful for me to, uh, as a motivation uh, to be the Monday Blues. Um, in, in seriousness, uh, thank you, as uh, once I full ideas uh, for organizing this event, uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk, um, and um, I will explain uh, briefly what uh, TPPI IP chapter is all about, and uh, to address some of the. Uh, Issues that has been raised by people. <clears throat> um, let me just give um, some general overview on how the government approached uh, the negotiations for IP. Um, and as you are aware, there are many chapters. There are the, the TPP is a, a trade agreement that covers many areas. You have the market access, right, uh, which is the typical uh, areas of negotiations for trade agreement. Uh, which covers uh, goods, services, and of course this uh, special comprehensive which covers uh, government procurement and financial services as well. Um, and then you have the rules based on uh, the disciplines, right? uh, which covers labor, environment, um, customs, uh, investment rules, um, intellectual property, and uh, competition policy, and many others. Um, the government, um, in particular the Ministry of Domestic Trade, who oversees the, uh, broadly the IP policies, um, approach IP uh, in a way um, that provides um, symmetrical uh, certainty and protection to the stakeholders of intellectual property. And who are the stakeholders here? So you have the innovator, for example, Saura, that's the innovator. Those are the uh, uh, party to uh, the invention, the creators invention. And then you have the typical user, right? Or 
uh, Malaysians or foreigners, whoever used those IP. Um, and of course, there's intermediaries as well right now. So, um, the government will try their best to find the sweet spot to provide a balance uh, to satisfy those three main stakeholders, the users, the intermediaries, and also the innovators. Um, with or without TPP, the government will actually review the IP policies from time to time. So for example, industrial or the Industrial Design Act, which is one of the IP uh, laws that uh, law in Malaysia, has been revised uh, a few months ago. Corporate Act was amended in 2012. Um, and why we are revising it? Because the, the industry is very dynamic. Um, the way businesses has been uh, operating has changed from time to time. Um, therefore, uh, the claim by critics out there that TPP somehow uh, dictate what Malaysian government do on IP with regard to IP policies is not uh, true. Uh, we 